All right, guys, I will get started. First, I want to introduce myself. I'm Dave. I'm, um, I'm in the Guilford location. Uh, I played around with all the settings. This is really as clear as I could get it. Uh, if you could see what I have my whole laptop set up on, you guys would appreciate this whole setup. Sorry, Barb. Hi, Debbie. Hey, Barb. Hey, Sandy. All right, let's get started. So a lot of you working with me in Guilford realize that I tend to make you guys do things that are a little different, a little outside of kind of the norm for what you would think in a strength training program. And that's because I kind of have a, a neurological approach to strength training, All right? There's a lot more that goes on under the scenes, under the skin. And uh, I wanna be able to explain that for you guys today. All right, so the first thing I wanna start with is why do athletes strength train? All right, obviously our goal is to become as athletic as possible. I'm not talking about throwing a baseball or playing football. We want to be as functional and safe as possible. And that's an athlete. They make it there because they are safe and they are functional. All right, M most athletes are looking to gain muscle. They want to protect themselves in a sport. They want to become stronger for a better, a better performance. They want to move safely so that they spend less time on the disabled list. They get to play more. And they want to increase their sport specific performance, which may be running, which may be jumping. It is different for each individual. All right, this is for athletes. All right, so then why do we strength train? Why do we strength train here at Joint Effort? All right, as we're getting older, we want to be able to gain muscle. We want to become stronger, you know, improve our, our quality of life and our daily function, improve our balance so that we don't constantly have to worry about walking around and falling. We want to be able to move safely because everybody knows injuries involve downtime, setbacks. All right. We want to increase our health, obviously, and increase our stamina. We want to be able to do physical functions for longer with less breaks. All right. Little different than why an athlete strength trains. All right. So now when it comes to athletes, why do coaches separate strength training from their practice? All right. We can both agree these are a little different. Strength training is where they're working on weights and building up muscle. Practice is where they're working on their sport specific performance. All right, for them that might be throwing a baseball, for you guys that might be going for a hike or gardening in your uneven ground and not having to lose your balance. That is your sport specific performance. So coaches will split up these two topics because they want a balance of their strength and skill. Right? They want it to be a 50-50. That is what's going to yield them wins and good performance. All right. A trainer's point of view, especially my point of view, is all my clients are athletes. All right. May not be the sport you're thinking of, baseball, basketball, grandparent duties. I've had all of you guys come in and say how difficult or tiring this can be. That is your sport. All right, housekeeping, laundry, putting away the groceries, these kind of things, that can be your sport. If you're the husband who's fixing stuff around the house, you're bending over and getting on your knees, that's your sport and your sport specific activity. All right, these are things you guys want to get better at. I want you guys to think of yourself as athletes, and this is your sport. All right, so again, I want my client's point of view to be. I would like to still perform like an athlete in my daily activities. Wouldn't you guys still like to do the daily activities as if you were younger? They were a heck of a lot easier, all right? There's a reason for that, all right? So factors that can be trained outside of just your strength training, just your bicep curls, just your shoulder presses, all right? We can work on your coordination. Coordination is a huge portion of your balance, all right? We can work on your balance. Balance is something almost everybody in joint effort is looking to get out of this program, right? We can move safely. That, that means less injuries. It actually means better balance and less pain and mobility. The more mobile our joints are, the better chance we have of being able to catch our balance. And again, I'll explain this all a little later, all right? Think of like a canopy when it comes to mobility. You have four legs on that tent. Right, that tent sits nice and straight the way you wanted it to when all four legs work as you needed them to. When one leg gets kind of stuck and stiff, now that canopy is crooked. All right, you need everything to work as it's designed to, to yield better balance, better coordination, and to move safely. All right, everything is 
teamwork. It's not just one simple idea at a time. All right, so now let's get into kind of what this presentation is about and how it pertains to you guys here at Joint Effort. All right, so what is balance? Balance is a coordination in which different elements are equal or in the correct proportions. All right, so we talked before about strength and skill. They want a balance of those two factors. That's what's going to yield them the best athletes on their team. All right, so now physical balance is, is that fast or slow movements? You know, when you trip and stumble to the floor, did that all happen really fastly or did that all go on very slow? All right, and there's also, is there a thought process involved in balance? Do you remember falling? Do you remember making the adjustments to put your hands out so you didn't hit your head? All, right, all these things happen in kind of the blink of an eye, but do you remember this? All right, so what is balance continued? So let's say I start moving. All right, these are all the processes involved in losing your balance and catching your balance. So I start moving, my body senses a loss of balance. We'll go into later in the presentation about how your body senses that, all right? And then it sends a signal to your brain that I'm falling. Your brain needs to know what's happening and your brain has to process that information, all right? Once it processes that information, it makes a decision about how it's gonna correct you and keep you from falling. It sends that signal down to your muscles and then your muscles have to make that adjustment, which is why we train these muscles in the gym but there's a little more that goes on that we need to work on. All right, so when I say balance, I kind of have a double meaning with that. I don't just mean balancing on one foot, I mean balancing everything, all right? So we've all seen, I know this is really kind of blurry, the My Plate that was uh, big in the government in like 2000s where they wanted you to have fruits and grains, vegetables and proteins all in a balanced, portion on your plate all right I threw a little twist on this as far as what I see as a trainer in the gym or my expectations is I want a balance of our human functions I want to balance your strength your coordination your vision and your proprioception all right so you can replace strength with fruits coordination with grains vision with your vegetables and proprioception with your protein this is your physical activity plate, all right? And just to dive into a little bit about what proprioception is, that are the little sensors inside your muscles that sense movement when you're not looking. So if you just stand on one leg, right? You can't see me, but I'm standing on one leg right now, but I'm losing my balance a little bit and my ankle has little sensors that are telling my brain which way I'm moving so that I can make that adjustment in my head and send the signal back to my feet. All right, just like what we talked about here, the brain has to process that information of the sensors before it makes that adjustment. All right. All right. So everybody's heard this. We want to dive into a little bit about this. You know, why does our balance get more challenging as we get older? There's, there's a lot of factors that come into this. One of them is injuries. All right, injuries cause setbacks. They cause our muscles to not function as they're designed to, or our joints, right? Go back to that canopy where if one of its legs isn't working, the whole canopy is, is crooked. All right, the same thing happens to us. Also humans, this is how we get this far, we tend to stick with what we're good at, all right? Meaning, let's say I'm not a very balanced person, so I'll go for walks at Ham and Asset where it's nice and flat, but I don't wanna go for a hike in, in the woods where it's a little more challenging on my balance, right? I'm already gonna choose what I'm good at. I'm not gonna to wanna to challenge my balance and maybe fall. So we stick to what we're good at. We start to limit our exposure of the things that are gonna improve our function, right? Also, so there are some age-related physiological changes that happen. Um, there's really not much you can do to fight this. You can slow these things down, but we all lose the ability to move as quickly. All right, we don't react to things as well. We don't move our hands as quick or our feet. We walk a little slower than maybe some of our younger family members. All right, we also lose the ability to react as quickly. That whole thought process slows down as we get older. And last, I know we've all heard, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. All right, well, that comes to this. These are all things that are inevitable as we get older. 
which is why they said, you know, you really can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you can. It just, it's a little more practice as you get older. There's a little more factors working against you that you have to put in some effort towards. Not to deter you from doing it, all of you members here at Joint Effort are already on the path of slowing these things down. All right, so now do you think balance or losing your balance is predictable? All right, what I mean by that is maybe before you make a decision, do you think your brain already has a good idea as to whether you're going to fall or not? Going back to that um, scenario of going hiking or versus a walk at Hammond Asset, your brain already knows you may be the person who loses their balance on one of those rocks. So I may get a little anxiety or apprehension about going for a hike. Also, what about when you lose your balance? Do you think your brain already has an idea of what it's going to do to catch you? Or do you think that thought process happens right as it happens? That's a little subjective. You may not remember what your brain chose to do to get you to stay upright if you fell or to put your hands out, but it's predictable. That little bit of anxiety going for a hike is your brain saying, you know, last time you went for a hike, you lost your balance a little bit. I'd feel more comfortable on a walk at Hammond Acid. So to me, balance is very predictable as it's happening and before it's happening. It just may be going on subconscious. All right, so now here's a little couple scenarios. I know this is tough to read, so I'll read through these, but when do we typically lose our balance? So the first scenario, do we lose our balance when we're hiking or when you stop to enjoy the view and have a sip of water? So again, hiking, or when you stop to have a sip of water, I would think you're gonna lose your balance when you're hiking versus when you just stop, stop your motion and have a little sip of water. All right, next scenario is, do you think you're gonna lose your balance walking in the house with groceries in your hands or when you're just cooking at the kitchen stove with those groceries? Everybody's a little different. I would think you're gonna lose your balance when your hands are full, when you're walking into the room, versus when your hands are full and you're just standing at the counter. Last, and I hope none of you have done a sobriety test, but this is where this comes into play. What about trying to walk in a perfectly straight line or just standing still, all right? I'm standing still right now. I don't really have much issues with my balance, but if you ask me to walk in a straight line where my tiles are, I might have a little bit of trouble. So if you agree with me on some of these things, all right, what do all these conditions have in common? All those scenarios involved motion. They involved momentum, all right? We lose our balance when our motion and our momentum is something we can't control anymore, all right? It's outside of our range of motion or outside of our strength. So to me, if you wanna improve your balance, you have to get better at controlling, increasing, decreasing, and changing directions of that momentum, all right? I, th I think of baby steps with this for two reasons. Babies do everything at a slow process, all right? They start not moving at all. Then a baby will stand up and not be in motion, all right? They're very still and fall, all right? Then a baby will start to walk and it'll walk right over to mom and dad and fall right in her lap, all right? That baby could control her momentum, but she couldn't decrease it, nor could she change directions. She just fell, all right? It's not until that baby starts to walk and then learns to slow down when it wants to stop. Now it has learned to control that momentum and you now have a baby that is walking, right? We all can kind of relate to that. I thought that would be a good scenario to show you guys. Uh, the other kind of point of view I have with this is these things aren't always very easy. They may seem easy, just like with the baby to us, all right? But you have to go through these steps slowly, right? You don't wanna just go right into changing directions of your momentum if you have trouble controlling it and slowing down. These are step-by-step -step processes, all right? So now, what medical conditions are associated with a loss of balance? So I know this is probably gonna touch home with some of you guys. Um, this is very uncommon, but Meniere's disease is associated with a loss of balance. It's a condition in your inner ear. Uh, it can give you vertigo-like symptoms. It is not a comfortable thing when it flares up. All right, same thing with positional vertigo. How many of you guys get dizzy when you lay down to do an exercise or when you're lying down and you have to kind of just settle in for a couple of minutes before you can go and start to do our ab crunch or a bridge or anything? All right, migraines can cause a loss of balance as well. 
you start to think a little fuzzy. Same thing with muscle loss, right? That's why we're all here at the gym to begin with. Head injuries, concussions, just falling and hitting your head can result in short-term loss of balance as well as it can stick around and become long-term. Uh, ear infections, this is a big one. You wouldn't think this one throws your balance off. It can quite a bit, actually. Vertigo is another inner ear issue. Uh, quite a few people suffer from this, and there doesn't seem to be much information out about treatment. I hope that this presentation helps you guys today. This is for mostly people in this position. All right, and then as well as injuries. When you injure your ankle, you not only injure the muscles, you injure that proprioception I mentioned earlier. All those little sensors now are skewed. They're giving off a little bit of off information. All right, so what do all these medical conditions have in common? Your vestibular system, all right? So this may be kind of new to some of you. Your vestibular system is just a balanced fluid filled system in your inner ear. Uh, I'll go over that as well. But migraines, Meniere's, headaches, head injuries, ear infections, and vertigo all involve your vestibular system. All right, so what is your vestibular system? It's a sensory system in each ear, all right? You've got one on your left ear and one on your right ear. That's gonna be very important, all right? It helps maintain your balance, coordination, and awareness of your orientation. All right, if I close my eyes and stand on one leg, how do I know that I'm still standing up straight? How do I know when I start to fall left or fall right? All right, it's also responsible for knowing which direction is up and which direction is down. Now that to me is very important to most of you because most of you are here with a fear of falling, which is down. All right, responsible for velocity of movement. Your vestibular system is in, responsible for knowing how fast you're falling so that it can make the adjustment faster. Make sense? And I know this isn't coming in that clear, so I'm trying to give you guys a second to view the slides before I go past. All right, what other conditions have an effect on my vestibular system? So what, why am I listening to this if I don't have Meniere's or if I don't have concussions or anything? Well, just any fall can have an effect on your vestibular system because abrupt changes of directions, just moving my head quick can throw off my dizziness in my vestibular system. If you suffer from vertigo, I don't advise you moving your head that quick, right? You would need some kind of evaluation before then. Head trauma, this goes with the falls. You hit your head, someone hits the back of your head, you got in an accident, right? That all throws the little sensory information off. Poor eyesight. How many of you listening wear glasses? Feel free to drop in the comments how many of you wear glasses, all right? When you lose input from one of your senses, something else has to work harder, all right? That's your vestibular system. It no longer is getting input on what you can see as well as we should, all right? Neck discomfort. Why does a stick neck play a role in this? Because if my neck is stiff, my eyes have to move so much more because I'm not gonna be moving my head. All right, now that puts more stress or more demand on these systems. And again, I mentioned just quick changes of directions, car accidents, these kind of things all affect this. All right, so what is my vestibular system in real life? How many of you wear, or not, I'm sorry, wear, I see, uh, Giovanna Waters wears glasses. Thank you for that. How many of you, when you're driving, say you're going somewhere you've never been before, you're on a road trip, maybe you're going to Vermont to finally get away. How many of you get a little anxious when you're driving and you have to look in your rearview mirror or one of your side mirrors? It may be just a tiny bit of anxiety, but that is because you're moving forward and now looking to the left or looking right. Two different senses happening at the same time. I'm moving forward but I'm looking left, right? That now involves my vestibular system because it has to disassociate those two movements, all right? How many of you pull your steering wheel a little when you turn to look in your rear view mirror? So if you look in your rear view mirror this way and you tend to turn your wheel that way, that's because your brain, your body couldn't disassociate you looking left, but not moving left, right? You still wanted to be driving straight. I hope I explained this clearly. I think this is something that a lot of people 
you know, maybe it happened just after you got in a car accident. Maybe it happens all the time. But if you tend to get a little anxious when you're looking somewhere other than right out of your, your windshield, that's because your vestibular system could probably use a little bit of work, all right, so that it communicates better with the rest of you. All right, let's take a quick little, quick little um, time to chat. Coming forward, this next slide is, is the most important part of my presentation. All right. So to get the most out of your routine, it takes balance. I don't mean standing on one leg. I mean, you want good input from your visual and vestibular system. Your exercises should challenge both of these systems. All right. A sense of speed, a direction of a fall. So if you work in Guilford with me, how many times do I come over and I'll walk past you as you're doing a balance exercise or I'll come and tap you on the shoulder? All right, my goal is to make sure you're fighting being very well balanced. You get a lot out of the fall of your balance than being standing up perfectly straight. All right, what I mean by that is all the sensory information you got as I came over and tapped you, or if I tapped you this way, you gained much more out of that two seconds of catching your balance than you did out of just standing there totally still. All right, I stimulated all your senses. And to make these adjustments, you still need a strong and quick muscular system. We still need to be training these muscles with dumbbells and with exercises, but we need a balance of other things happening to get the most out of it, All right? So again, we went as far as talking about your visual and vestibular system, as well as your muscular system. You need a coordination of these systems to maintain an upright position to be the best balance or the best home athlete you can be. All right, so now a lot of you are probably thinking, I'm not an athlete, I never was an athlete. Why the heck does coordination matter? All right, we talked about timing as far as losing your balance. I think most of you would agree it happens like that. All right, I lost my balance like that and I fell and I don't remember anything. All right, so you need to be able to send messages to your muscles efficiently on the left side and the right side, all right? Why is that so important? These decisions are made in a fraction of a second. How many times does your trainer ask you to do a dead bug or a bird dog or maybe a lunge and I want you to touch your toes if you're in Guilford? Do you have to kind of stop and think about which hand and which foot I asked you to move or do you take my directions and do them instantly? A lot of times you have to kind of stop and think, all right, he wants my right hand and my left foot to work. A lot of you in Guilford have known I've asked for that quite a bit, all right? This has to happen that fast when you catch your balance, but when someone's asking you to follow directions, you have to think twice about it. So we need to kind of get these two systems to work a little more smoothly. You can't sacrifice that time when you're losing your balance. It all has to happen quick. All right, if, if any of you guys have done the dead bug or the bird dog, you know that as you practice this more, it gets easier to ask the right foot and the left hand to work together. All right, so now here's just a little visual, and my God, this is terrible. I'm sorry you guys can't see this. So here's a visual as to why coordination and balance uh, matters so much. This is like an old scale, all right? You've got a scale on this side and a scale on this side, both very well balanced, all right? That's why I talked about your right side and your left side both being equal, all right? We need your right and left side to work well as far as coordination and as far as strength and mobility. If you have injuries, the more symmetrical we can get things to work, the better balanced you're gonna be. So you guys can't see this, but I have a figure skater here. I know many of you watch Dancing with the Stars or just figure skating in general. If you watch them figure skating, his lead foot when he's skating is paired with his opposite arm. So he's got his right leg in front of him and his left arm in front of him. So again, right arm, left leg, very balanced. On the other side, he's got his right arm behind him, left leg in front of him, right? So there's that. I even went as far as if you've done our boxing class, right? There's a picture of George doing a fantastic job in our boxing class. 
when he steps and throws that punch. There's a reason why I ask you to put a certain leg in front when you throw a punch with your right arm. All right, if you're all at home, get up, try this, put your left foot in front of you and cross your body with your right arm. That's a natural movement. If you watch the Olympics at all, Usain Bolt, he's following the same pattern that George is, the same pattern that the figure skater is. They all have a perfect balance of two limbs on the, in front of them, two limbs behind them, one belonging to the left side, one belonging to the right. I hope this comes in more clear when we upload this later. I can answer any questions that come up after. All right, so now let's get a little bit into how we do this at joint effort. All right, so how do you work your vestibular system with exercise? So I'm not telling you to put the dumbbell down. I may be telling you to grab a little bit lighter of a dumbbell so we can physically throw a twist on some of these exercises. All right, your vestibular system is directly connected to your eyes. What your eyes see, your vestibular system gets information right away. All right, and that's why I said if you're wearing glasses, hmm, you're going to need a little more work out of your vestibular system because it's getting some false information from there, especially if you need to see a peripheral, which most of our glasses don't cover. All right, we can also create momentum in exercise. We're going to start to have you doing exercises off machines. All right, I want to change directions. Maybe we're doing shuffles or side lunges. All right, and then lastly, you can limit or change the amount of information from other sensory systems. So that's you wearing glasses, all right? You are already getting less clear information from your eyes, so something else has to work harder. Think of like the daredevil. The guy is blind, but he becomes so much more athletic because of it. Other systems have a chance to kind of take place. All right, so now if you are a member at Joint Effort, I know you've seen this test here, all right? A single leg balance test. We've all done it before, right? Drop a yes in the comments. All right, what is one of the first tips people will have you doing during this single leg balance test if you want a better, better result? You know, a lot of times people will lift their leg up, instantly fall, and we'll say, whoa, 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 let's do that one more time. I know you can get a better result. And most of the time we'll say, pick something not moving at the wall, like the number four, and stare at it. All right, and most of the time you'll get a better result. I think almost all of us have been through this before. But now we really can't ignore the fact that what my eyes see resulted in better balance or maybe worse balance. All right, so here's what I said. We're gonna be throwing a twist on strength training, literally. All right, so these are gonna be some changes you might see going forward in your exercise prescription. Or like I said, if you've been working with me and Guilford or anybody else, I'm sure with the other trainers, you've already been practicing some of these. If you're doing lunges and stuff off the machines, you're already practicing this. It's just now I finally get a chance to explain what's happening because it's not tangible. It's like blood pressure, it's the silent skill. All right, so the first factor we're gonna start to mess with, momentum, all right? I love to make you guys create momentum in your exercises, all right? I love to make you do lunges and side steps and shuffles, all right? Using momentum means that I now have to stop without falling, all right? This doesn't quite happen on machines the same way. These are great for strength training, but in terms of getting the most for balance, momentum is one of the keys, all right? We need to learn how to accelerate and decelerate during simple movements, walking forward. I know everybody hates when I make them walk backwards, but it's the same movement. Your momentum is just in a different direction, all right? And then we can do complex movements where we start to twist all of our favorite grapevines and stepovers, these all can be tossed in with momentum. All right, we're also gonna to start to see a change in directions. So this one gets a little, little funky. All right, so I, I wanna force you to change directions during exercises. There's gotta be at least 25% of the people who hate me in Guilford because I make them pivot and stand and step in all different directions. All the guys tell me it feels like a dance class and that's the last thing they wanna be doing. But like I mentioned earlier, we don't like to practice things we're not good at, right? So I need to get you guys to twist and to pivot, right? And lastly, moving in opposing directions at the same time. If you can bear with me here, when you do uh, any exercise in a split stance, I'm gonna use this split stance with a med ball chop. 
All right, if you guys can stand up with me and try this, if we put our right leg in front of us, all right, and put all our weight on our right leg, you'll notice my belly button has now shifted a little bit to the right. So my hips are facing right. When we make you guys chop, you're now moving in different directions while my hips are not. So your upper body and lower body are moving in different directions. All right, that throws your vestibular system right into whack. That is so much stimulus for them. That is a great way to train. There's a reason why we're making you guys do these movements. All right, distractions. Like I mentioned, if, if you're in Guilford, I will walk by you and screw up that number four that you're looking at. Sometimes I'll go and tap maybe Judy Sullivan or Janet McClure on the side of the shoulder just to throw them into a little off balance. All right, I need you to look in different directions. I know Judy just mentioned she stares at the wall. Some of my members, I'll make them stare straight down at their feet, All right? They can balance very well when you see your feet. When you start to look away from your feet, things get way harder. Try it yourself, All right? I interrupt your vision. This is me walking by you, All right? I have Susanna Gradle, one of my members, doing exercises with her eyes closed. All right, the minute she opens her eyes, her movement is gonna be that much better because she's now back to having three systems instead of two working with her. All right, the goal is to cause you to lose your balance. You get the most out of this sensory information as you fall. And I don't want you guys to fall on the ground. I mean, as you fall to make that adjustment to put my foot out. All right, I think we mostly can agree that we learn more from our fails than when we succeed. So our brain knows that I didn't catch myself falling that quick. I need to try that a little quicker or move my leg out a little more next time. So all these different exposures are what's gonna make your brain familiar with staying on your feet. All right, these are where things get a little tough, especially if you have a little vertigo. These are the things that we would start very slow and progress our way into. All right, head and eye movements. I do this with some of you guys at the gym. Not everybody needs this, right? But during an exercise, move your eyes and not your head. Single leg balance test, I can look left and look right. That'll start to make me sway a little bit, all right? And then maybe during your chop, I make you look at something fixed on the screen so that now my head is moving and not my eyes, all right? And moving both in different directions. Unfortunately, the video just doesn't come in very clear for me to show you that but that would be watching something moving left to you. Maybe someone's throwing a baseball, but I'm physically walking to the other direction, all right? We can do all sorts of movements with those, with the ropes, with the dumbbells, all right? So now what is the goal of all this? What, why do I wanna train my vestibular system? Why do I wanna do this at the gym? We wanna mimic real life situations. I, I want you to be able to balance yourself on one leg, you know, in the strength room, a joint effort, but I also want you to be able to do it at the beach when you have to put your socks on or your beach shoes on or something like that. All right? I want you to be able to become familiar with these movements and positions so that your brain knows exactly what to do to keep you on your feet if you do start to lose your balance. All right? And my goal as far as the coordinating movements is I want you guys to function better. All right? To function better means that you worry less about your balance. You get back to doing some of the things you've probably done in the past. Um, whether that be hiking, walking on the beach, maybe you still ski, right? These are things that get more challenging as we get older, but they don't have to. All right. So how do we get better at everything we've talked about? We talked about coordinating movements. How do we get better at controlling momentum or changing directions, right? How do we get better at balancing when I'm not paying attention? All right, we all can pay attention to something and keep our balance, but it's when we're walking through the garage and our, our wife yells to grab something else and we make that quick move, that's when we lose our balance. But how do we come familiar with those quick moves or turning my head? How do we become familiar with moving and looking in different directions or reacting to these distractions? All right, this should be no, no a surprise to all of you. We practice this at the gym. All right, we don't just throw the dumbbells around, we don't just hop around, we can incorporate both of them into your program to make sure you're getting the most out of this. All right, your vestibular system, your neurological system is silent. You can't see it, hear it, you can feel it. It's very hard to test, 
but this plays a huge role in how well you balance. So again, I'm really sorry for if this didn't come in very clear or for Lynn, I know you said it kind of stopped and went dead. The Italian in me makes me move my hands when I talk. And I'm sure that that made this very hard to follow. Um, if you guys have any questions, drop your questions in the little comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer any of them. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Maybe this explains why I've had you guys do some interesting things, or maybe it has sparked your interest. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. I hope everybody is safe at home.